All right, gang, market update time. Thank you for being with me this evening. Um, I am recording in the evening, so if my voice is a little lower, a little more subdued, that's why I usually record these during the day. Um, don't know why you care, but I just brought it up off the top. Uh, today, we're talking zip codes and which ones are the hottest and which ones are the coldest in the Denver market right now. Um, as a market update, I try to make it have a point. So I'll go through some basic stats to just kind of fly through it really quickly to give you an idea of where we are in the Denver Metro. And then also, um, just want to drill down in these zip codes and show you really the five hottest and five coldest zip codes for real estate right now, because number one, if you're thinking about buying or selling, uh, I think this is interesting to show you where things are, really hot or really cold. It can be very different. We always talk about real estate being local. Like I pay attention to national real estate news because it matters in some way for what we do locally, but it, it often can be very different. The story nationally it can be very different from the story we hear in the Denver Metro. Um, and by that same token, the story in any of these individual towns, municipalities, zip codes or neighborhoods it can be wildly different, even within the Denver Metro, uh, just based on a number of factors. At the same time, you can have two very different real estate markets in two different zip codes in the Denver Metro, and that's what we're going to see today. So I'm going to start with the five coldest and then go to the five hottest right now. And the number one hottest, the hottest zip code in Denver real estate, uh, which you can see is actually up here. Uh, we're going to drill way down on this stuff because this map doesn't show us so much, but really surprised me. So it's like a classic YouTube thing to say, number one will shock you. Stay to the end. It's kind of what I'm saying. It actually did shock me. I think that's an okay word to use. And it's a YouTube video, so you can scroll to the end if you want to. But um, Sam Newman, if you're new here, Denver real estate agent, um, work with a great real estate team. If you have any sort of needs as far as buying or selling a home, uh, would love to get on a call with you and, and figure out if we can be of help. So uh, let, let's get, get this going here. We have Megan Aller's report here. I, I took out a select few pages. If you've watched these before, you're familiar with, familiar with Megan Aller. She has the best data <clears throat> in the Denver Metro and maybe nationally as a title rep. She does very, very well. And because of how well she drills down. So I just started with this slide um, to give you an idea of what we're looking at. But let's scroll. Actually, I don't want to go all the way there. I'm going to real quick go up. We're going to look at a number of things. There's Megan. Hi. Um, so this is the data set from July. That's the most recent full month of data we have. It lags a little bit, um, but this does tell the story of what's going on. I, I believe it's it's not going to be too much different uh, from now to any uh, September to July. Um, okay. So just getting, getting you, I like to look at this year over year, uh, column right here, detached single family. We can look, look at attached too, but in terms of active units, we're up 57% year over year. I mean, it's absolutely huge, uh, year over year. It, it, it kind of adjusts for seasonality. So that's why I like it over month over month. Um, in terms of attached single family condos and townhomes, we're up 86%. I mean, it's, it's huge. It's slowed down so much here in the latter part of 2024, which we kind of expected. It's probably slowing down a little more than many people expected. Uh, best buyer opportunity in the last 10 years easily right now. Uh, people will say, how long will, will that last? I don't know. Probably until definitely until the election, probably until the new year after that, whatever we can get into that. Um, spring's always a hotter season. So it's going to be more buyer activity in the spring. Um, but also more normal of a real estate market, more of a normal cycle than what we saw 2020 through 2023, let's say early 2023. And, um, you know, interest rates are going to play a big role in that right now. Interest rates have come down a little bit. People are expecting them to come down more between now and spring, but that's, kind of where things stand right now in terms of closed properties. We are actually up year over year, um, in, in detached in single family homes. We're down big, pretty significant year over year in attached and odds of selling is a number we're going to look at big time because I think that I'll explain why, but that's kind of my, my guiding light when I'm looking at hottest and coldest neighborhoods right now, zip codes, uh, odds of selling is down 10% year over year, 20% in attached properties. It's just much, much slower. Um, you know, home prices are, are still haven't come down a whole lot since the peak. 
um, because we have an inventory issue because of a number of factors, which I've gone into ad nauseum before, so I won't again. Um, but that's kind of where we're at in general in the Denver real estate market. So getting into the, uh, this is, this just shows, okay. So the, the black area here is active inventory. Let's just say that. And you're seeing, um, I'll move myself, but basically this was kind of leading up to and during and just post crash of 2008, then things got much, much lower in terms of active inventory. Then here in COVID, I mean, it bottomed out and now it's coming back up again. That's all this, this graph shows to me. It's not a normal real estate market because all of these affordability issues, this lock in effect with interest rates where people don't want to sell their homes if they have a great interest rate. Um, so I don't know if it's normal. I don't know if there is a, a normal real estate market, honestly. Um, but it's getting to be more of a normal cycle from a seasonal perspective. Uh, this one I like to show, so this is detached and this is active units currently on the market compared to the historic baseline. So Megan breaks that out from 2013 to 2019, more of a healthy market. And then she also throws 2023 in there because things were returning to normal, normal in 2023, normal <laughs> Garfield. Anyway, what you're seeing is right now, this blue line is the active inventory. We have more active inventory than we have typically uh, for this time of year and in August and September, that's going to look similar. It's going to be above. And then this is pending units. We have fewer pending units than we typically do. So more on the market, fewer going pending, fewer selling more buyer opportunities. Um, closed units, same thing. Closed units are way down. If you're looking at these graphs. Okay, and then months of supply is how we measure how much inventory there is. Um, typically, we say six months of supply is a, is a perfectly balanced market. It would take six months to sell all these homes if nothing new came on the market. Uh, we have been well below that since I've been doing real estate full time. But this breaks it out as uh, for by price range, which I think is interesting. All prices were at two point five months of supply. Um, in the height of the COVID frenzy that was at or below one month of supply. Um, but you're seeing, okay, so in this price point here, 200 to 399,000, I don't know. Um, by the way, below that zero to 199, what are you getting for that parking spot downtown that there's nothing obviously, cause there's nothing there two to 300 for detached. Yes, that is very, very hot market. You see why the inventory is the lowest there getting up to this four to 600,000 price range. That's kind of your starting point for a single family home. If it's something you don't want to have to do a bunch of work to and something you can move into, um, 2.2 months of supply was interesting though. It doesn't go up too much from that all the way up to a million dollars. Uh, supply is still low all the way up to a million, even a million to a million and a half, uh, supplies at 2.8 months of supply. That's, it's, you know, significantly up from 2.2, but it's still in the twos. Then once we go above one and a half, it goes way up 4.7, 6.5. These are now luxury and ultra luxury price points in the Denver Metro. So that's just a much smaller buyer pool. The, the months of supply is always, I shouldn't say always, but typically going to be much higher there. Okay, and I broke out this map just to, this is what I started on. This is just showing what we're doing. We're looking at the Denver Metro. We're looking at all these counties and we're figuring out who is the hottest and who is the coldest as far as real estate market right now. So, okay, coming down to this, I have a five of each. So I'm not just going to show you a table. We're going to break this out and look at maps for these areas too. Okay, but I'm just starting with the table. So starting with uh, number five as far as coldest. And I made that a little green um, square on the left. So it's 80221. This is the fifth coolest, the fifth most buyer friendly zip code in the Denver Metro. We'll look at what that means in a second. Okay. But I want to break it out here. So I pulled it up on Google earth too. So we can take a look at 80221, where that is, what that means that's up here. So here's the Denver Metro. Where should I go? Where should I put myself? It's fine. I'll be, I should probably actually be there. Let's try that for now. Um, I feel like I always do this. There's the Denver Metro. Okay. This is Northwest Denver and this is twin lakes, Berkeley, but this is not the Berkeley neighborhood. It's very confusing because there's two Berkeley's over here. So it's basically this Chaffee park area up to twin lakes and Sherylwood kind of on the Westminster Arvada border at North west part of Denver. Okay. So the fifth coolest, the fifth best buyer opportunity right now 
in this area. So 802.21, median days on market. I knew this wasn't going to work. Make me smaller. Put me here. <laughs> Uh, months of supply right there, about four months of supply. So that's hefty compared to 2.5 for the Metro as a whole. Um, we are looking at percent of balance, 80% of balance. Average days on market is 18. So properties are selling pretty quickly, but there's a lot on the market. Odds of selling. Okay, this is how I broke it down. Odds of selling right there is 28%. That's very, very low. Um, for reference, in the height of the frenzy, that was over 80% for the entire Denver Metro. So big change in these neighborhoods we're going to look at uh, right now. And so odds of selling takes into account just what are the odds if you list a property in this zip code, it will sell within a month. That's based on all the properties that were listed and all the properties that went p pending in a given month. So odds of selling is a great way. You have all these metrics to determine or to look at to see you know what's hotter, what's colder, everything like that. Odds of selling, I think, is a, is a good way to to kind of do that, um, to kind of get it an idea of, of what, you know, just a barometer for the market. Okay. So that's 80221. If we're seeing it up there, it's right on the Westminster border, not quite to federal heights. Um, Cheryl Wood, Twin Lakes, you don't hear it talked about a lot. And, you know, it's one of those areas where the price point, it's median price 507. So you can get a starter home in that half million dollar range. Um, 40% of homes in this neighborhood had price reductions. Uh, it is it is very buyer friendly right now. Okay, the next one, uh, number four, 80218. Perfect, it's right here. So you're gonna see the average price point at 80218 is 687, significantly higher. And where are we going here? 80218. By the way, the other reason I think this is interesting to look at and break it down by hottest and coldest zip codes is because not only does, you know, if you're interested in buying or selling, it gives you an idea of where there might be opportunity and where there isn't. But number two, because it really, I think, tells a story of what's going on in the Denver Metro, not just in terms of real estate, but in terms of migration, which we talked about on a recent video. Um, it's very interesting. And when we get near the end, that story is going to become more clear, I believe. So 80218. Now we're getting into central Denver neighborhoods. So this is basically Alamo Placita. Um half of country club all the way up to just north of Colfax city park west into uh uptown the uptown area and that's where this zip code is so cheeseman park also is right in the middle this is cheeseman thank you i'm like why isn't that popping up um that's right in the middle there so okay this is um also 47 average days on market like i said the average sold price is much higher um 4.7 months of supply and odds of sale, 26%. Okay. Uh, percentage of properties that are under contract in seven days, 12.5%. So in the first week, you know, it's still, we're still in a seller's market technically. So for only 12% to go under contract in the first week, very, very uh, low. 62% of listings in this here zip code had a price reduction. You're seeing less of an appetite I believe for older non premier, not throwing any shade, but non premier central Denver neighborhoods here. Um, you know, there's, there's challenges with this. There's a lot of condos there. HOA fees are rising, all sorts of stuff. Um, that's what's going on there. Number three, eight Oh two Oh four. It's funny. The last three you'll see I'm burying the lead right here, but they're all burying the lead is not what to say there, but they're all, they're all right in a row. So eight Oh two Oh four. Which zip code is this? Okay, check this out. So this is basically uh, the Lincoln Park, Auraria campus, okay? Over to the west side of Denver, Villa Park, West Colfax neighborhoods, okay? So very central. And this encompasses, that's three kind of different neighborhoods. So we should really be drilling down even more specifically. I'm just not going to give you an hour-long video um, on this. Uh, so we're just going to look at it by zip code. So Lincoln Park, I mean, that's just adjacent to downtown, basically, just to the west of Cap Hill. Over here into these western, again, less premier neighborhoods, because honestly, we're talking Sloan's Lake, West Highlands, um, just to the, the north of it. That's going to be a lot of interest. A lot of money is there. Uh, a little less premier over here in West Colfax, although there's still some nice areas. And so, okay, uh, median or average home price, sorry, 619 um, 87% of balance, 4.8 months of supply. So that's almost double, um, what's going on in the met metro as a whole, 25% odds of selling. 
and under contract in seven days, 41%. So they're moving a little bit faster, but still 44% of homes had a price reduction and 1% of homes in the zip code sold over asking price. Um, by the way, they, she, has, she breaks it down by average seller concession to my zip code, which I think is interesting because seller concessions right now in this time of the market are um, a big tool that buyers are using to reduce their interest rate. 61% is it, I just glossed over that, but you can take the seller concession, do a temporary or permanent interest rate buy down, uh, make that monthly payment a little more affordable. 61% uh, of homes that sold here in the zip code had a concession of some sort, a seller concession of some sort. Look at that. When we're talking about buyer opportunity, that is huge. Um, and then how many had price reductions? 5%. So, oh, no, that's the amount reduced. I'm sorry. Yeah, 44% had price reductions. Huge. So pr you're looking at price reduction and a seller concession with almost half of the properties here in the zip code are getting both those things. Okay. Number two, the second hottest, 80203. Here we are, Cap Hill. You know, we're just just to the west of, I mean, really, we're in the same, okay, this was, this was number four right here. This was number three, and this is number two. It's this central Denver area um, just to the southeast of downtown. Cap Hill, all the way up into North Cap Hill. That's kind of uptowny, And then down here into the Spear neighborhood just to the south of Spear Boulevard. All right, 80203. Average sold price, 414. A lot of condos, attached properties. Uh, average days on market, 50 days on market here in this slice of, we're just going to call it Cap Hill. I've always thought Cap Hill is a really good buyer opportunity since I've been in real estate. It, it's just, it's a good Denver neighborhood. It is, again, we'll talk about what the story is being told here. Um, parking sucks, but it's, I think it's a good neighborhood, a little older, a little grittier than some other neighborhoods, but 414, as far as an average home price that was sold here in this month, it's, I think it's a good buyer opportunity still. It has been for a long time. 25% odds of selling. 47% um, had a price reduction. And 57% uh, had some sort of seller concession. That's huge. If you watched this channel before, uh, I've talked about this. The coldest uh, zip code in the Denver metro right now by far has been for a long time. It's downtown. Union Station Central Business Di District. This is the heart of Lodo, okay? So there it is, Denver. This is it. So this is basically all the way down to Colfax, just north of Golden Triangle. But this is Union Station. You see Coors Field right there. You see Union Station right here. This is the slowest market by far. This is the best buyer opportunity. This has got, let's see if I can go. I don't know if that helps anything or not. Maybe. Um no, it doesn't. I'm going to zoom back out. 76 average days on market in downtown, the downtown area. Percentage of balance, 266% of balance. We were in the 80s with these other neighborhoods. Okay, that is nearly nine months of supply. Again, a balanced market is six months of supply. This is nearly nine months of supply in Lodo. Uh, so this is fully into buyer's market territory. People are probably saying like, yeah, of course, it is a buyer's market right now. <laughs> buyer's market, we go, we use that months of supply metric to determine what is buyer's seller's market. Overall, we're still in a seller's market. It's just much more buyer friendly. But in Lodo, it is a full-on buyer's market. Odds of selling, 13.6%. It's lower than I've seen anywhere since I've been doing this. Um, under contract in seven days, 16%, 44% had price reductions. The only reason it's not higher is because I think real estate agents are probably doing a decent job of saying, no, don't drop your price just because you haven't had that many showings or you haven't gone under contract in 30 days. It just takes a long time downtown right now. Uh, 11% sold over asking price. That's actually surprisingly high. Um, only 27% had seller concessions. That's kind of interesting. But the average seller concession amount is $10,000. The other thing, too, the average sold price is nine thirty eight dollars downtown. That's skewed by some huge sales. That's why I wish we had median on here. We don't. It's okay. Um, no big deal. So that is the the state of – those are the most – the buyer, most buyer friendly places in town. So you got 80221, Sherylwood Twin Lakes. You have – 
Um, really all these central Denver neighborhoods, but we'll call it Cheeseman Park, Alamo Placita. You have Lincoln Park going west into Villa Park and West Colfax. Uh, there's Cap Hill. Cap Hill, great buyer opportunity. And there's downtown, downtown Lodo. Um, it's a bigger conversation about do you believe in downtown? Do you think it's a good investment opportunity long term? I personally do. Some others disagree. Um, like I said, longer conversation. Okay, then we're going to go over to, yeah, here we go. It's kind of funny. You can just see my computer on here, but whatever. Nothing to hide. Okay, we are going to go to the hottest. These are the hottest zip codes, and you're going to start to see um, the story I'm talking about with what people are valuing in the Denver Metro right now. So, 80005. Yes, where is that? It's farther out. It's way farther out. That's point number one. Most of these on the hot list are. Okay, so this is Arvada Westminster. It's interesting because it's not Old Town Arvada, which is down here. Love Old Town Arvada. Um, it's to the northwest. It's not quite out into Leiden Rock and Candelas. That's over here, or Candelas, if you will. It's right by this Stanley Lake area, West Westminster. So it's pretty nice up here. You have Club Crest. You have Timber Cove. These are nice sounding neighborhood names. It's very suburban. Okay. Um, it's very nice, pretty quiet. That is something that since COVID people have been craving. It's still happening. 80005. I have to scroll to that to get our numbers. 645 average sold price. So you get a nice house and a yard for not the 900,000 that it might cost you in an old central Denver neighborhood. Um, Average days on market are 20 percent of balance is 27 percent of balance. So much slower than 266 percent downtown. <laughs> 1.6, 1.7 months of inventory. OK, it's really, really low. There's just not a lot of inventory there. 100.1 percent close to list price ratio. That means on average in this zip code right now or as of the most recent data, homes are going for over asking price just a little bit but over asking price, even if they're going at asking price right now, um, that is a, a feat because many places aren't, uh, but they're literally, this is crazy. Percentage of listings that sold over asking price in this data set, 47%. This is hot right now up here. It's kind of hidden. It's kind of on its own. Um, it's kind of under the radar. You know, it's not like some of these neighborhoods you hear talked about, but Westminster Arvada, that junction right there, very hot. Okay. Next neighborhood, 80112. I have to scroll to it. There she is. Okay, where are we? South Glen. If you know, or if you don't know, now you do know. Denver, South Glen. Okay, just north of Highlands Ranch. This is Centennial. It, it comes into Littleton too. Um, South Glen. This is nice. I sold a house here last year, and it is a kind of similar to the last one. Nice, idyllic, uh, accessible neighborhood, not crazy prices. Average price, 677. Um, percent of balance, 24%. Month supply, 1.4%. 53% odds of selling. We're, we're only at 99.6. Close the list price ratio. 28% um, sold over asking price. So not as frenetic in, in that way, but um, with concessions. Still at 52% sold with concessions, which is interesting. Concessions are a big one right now. But you are seeing, okay, a much more suburb. This is twice. This is two for two on the hot list much more suburban feel. This is what people are valuing right now, at least in terms of buying homes. Okay. 80219. This is the third highest, um, the third hottest, let's say. Okay. Where are we? We're in Highlands Ranch. We are just to the Southwest of where we were. Okay. Um, the West Ridge zip code. This is sort of over. I don't know if this is technically back country, but it's over in the back country area. If you know, back country is very, very popular part of Highlands Ranch. Um, Honestly, very close to Sterling Ranch, too. Southwest, okay, suburban, master planned, close to the foothills. Okay, that's what you're seeing with the Arvada one, with number five, I think, the Arvada Westminster one. Then you have South Glen, which is straight south, but we're closer to the foothills here. The way the way this this shakes out, 637. Average, days on, uh, average home price, average days on market, 17. 30% of balance, 1.48% months of supply, 54% odds of selling. Sorry, there's a lot of numbers. Um, amount reduced, 2.9%. So the price reductions were not very big, even when they do did that. When they do did them, when they did do them, 33% of the time, and 28% sold for over asking price, which is interesting. That's that's a lot. 
Um, but still, 42% had concessions. Okay, getting near the top. We're getting there, gang. If you skipped here, I don't blame you. <laughs> if you're with me the whole time, God bless you. Leave a comment. Um, 80233, where are we over here? Okay, this is the second hottest. This We were just in South Glen a little bit ago. This is North Glen. So North Glen Thornton, this area, okay, directly north, again, suburban, I've been talking about North Glen Thornton for a while. I've been talking privately with a lot of clients about Thornton, North Glen. Um, one of the better buyer opportunities, my favorite opportunity right now, if you're looking for a single family home, that's not going to break the bank because it's nice. It's not Sloan's Lake, but it's nice. It's nice up there. Average sale price, um, 470 North Glen. You know, if you've been there, it's, it's nice. It's not, you're not going to brag about it necessarily, but you can get it at 470. You can get into a nice, Solid home for 500 grand there. Uh, average is on market 14. 1.39% month supply of inventory. 55% odds of selling. Okay. Uh, 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 listings that sold over asking price, 41%. That's crazy to me. That's still surprising to me because I, I'm working in this every day and I'm seeing still homes sit on the market. But 41% sold over asking price. There is a little chicanery, if you will, if that's how you say that word. With the over asking price, I will tell you right now, because it relates to these seller concessions, because 63% here had seller concessions, they're, they're happening all over the place. Sometimes, if you're a buyer, the first week on the market, and you want to get, um, you know, you, you want to lock up the house, but you don't want to have that, that interest rate, right? You want to help your monthly payment at least for a little while, you can go um, seller concession, you can go over ask price. And then have the seller concession, so you can still get that to get that lower interest rate. So, like, say it's for five hundred, but you need ten grand for the the concession to get yourself a temporary interest rate buy down. Well, we offer five ten, and then we take the ten grand back in the seller concession. So the number does get a little skewed, but it's still a whole lot of places going over asking price um, here in North Glen, North Glen Thornton. I love it. And number one, the hottest. Zip code in the Denver Metro right now, 80239. Where's that? This is what I was going to say. This will shock you. Montbello. Yeah. This is the weird one. It's a bit of an outlier. Those last four, I don't want to say made more sense, but they fit together in the narrative. Suburban, quiet. Um, you know, Montbello is a bit suburban and quiet. And I mean, we're going, by the way, it's not just Montbello. We're going towards this gateway neighborhood over here too. That's getting into, you know, Green Valley Ranch. We're almost to Green Valley Ranch, but we're not. Um, it's right up by the Rocky Mountain Arsenal. Montbello is not a neighborhood you hear about a ton. It's technically Denver. Um, some, a little bit, it's going to be Commerce City here, but that's just in the, the Arsenal. It's just to the east of Central Park, but it's not really like Central Park. It's not new. It's a much older neighborhood. Um, kind of an industrial feel in some parts of it. My pillow. So what are we doing here? Again, purchase price, 460. Average purchase price. Days on market, 30. Percent of balance, 24%, 1.4. Uh, okay, uh, month supply. Odds of selling, 57% in Montbello. It's an affordability thing. That's what I think. That's what I see going on here. Uh, close the list price ratio, 100.3%. We are over close or over asking price on average. Again, the seller concession factor plays in there with the way people are structuring deals, but still, it's impressive. Um, and 40% had price reductions. You know, it's um, so this was an interesting one. So I actually pulled up Mont Bello in the MLS. Okay. And I want to look at it. It's not just Montbello, but I pulled up the zip code in the MLS. So it's Montbello into Gateway and seeing kind of what's happening here. So these are the solds in the month of, because I was like, is this a big enough data set, number one, to make anything off of? This is 31 sales in the month of July. So that's, you know, it's a, it's a fair, um, a fair sample size, honestly. So you're looking at the purchase prices. Some are up to 600, but I really want to look in that more average. Um, the, so this is Montbello. Five days on market, and it sold for right at asking price. Now, was there a seller concession? Yes, there was. That's what I'm talking about. Five thousand dollars seller concession that helped with that with that monthly payment. Let's look at what this is. It's a nice remodeled home, not too big, but it's a remodel. It's under five hundred thousand dollars. 
you see why this zip code is getting the heat right now. I'm still surprised Montbello is number one. But that's what makes an exercise like this fun. Okay? There's one. What else we got? That's Crown Boulevard, Randolph Place, also in Montbello, 469. They came down 10 grand. There was also a $5,000 seller concession, 25 days on market, which right now is not too bad. The same thing. Remodeled Ranch. Look at that. I mean, it's basically the same exact thing going with those last two ones. Uh, this one sold. So this is Montbello. This sold right at asking price at 465. Three bed, two bath, 1,300 square feet. We did have a $5,000 seller concession. Wow. This is, this, is, this is three of the same house, basically. They're not the same house. They're different, but you see what's going on here. People can get into this thing for under half a million dollars and get the seller concession to make your monthly payment better in the short term. Um, it makes sense. It makes sense to me. And it's not as far out as some of these places. That's probably a benefit being far out. Clearly it is because four of the top five neighborhoods on here were legit suburbs. Um, but this is, uh, this is not quite as far out. I mean, you're close to central park. You're close to Lowry. You can get downtown to not w without too much fuss. Um, you're close to the Rocky mountain arsenal, which you can go and see bison for free, which is amazing. I've been talking for a half hour. I need to stop I again. If you made it to the end here, God bless you. And if I can do anything for you, um, please reach out. Would love to help. You're the best. Uh, let me know what you think of the comments.